A blue frame undisturbed for 80 minutes is the visual foundation and extensive reflection of Derek Jarman's Blue, a film which explores Derek Jarman's own struggles, frustrations and vulnerabilities with suffering from AIDS. Derek Jarman was an influential artist, filmmaker and activist, creating experimental Super 8 films, directing music videos for Coil, Pet Shop Boys, Bob Geldof, Brian Ferry, The Smiths and Marianne Faithfull. With his feature length film Blue, the focus of the blue frame is to reflect Derek Jarman's own gradual blindness caused by an AIDS-related infection to his retina, which caused him to only see blue. Outside of the literal, blue is also used as a motif throughout the film as Derek Jarman's narration transitions between stream-of-consciousness poetry and realistic recollections of his experiences being treated for AIDS. As a film, it is a sensory experience, as musical interludes and experimental Experimental sound design leads Blue's less monologue-driven chapters. Max Ramsey, writing for Little White Lies, states that, like many other Jarman works, the way Blue was screened made it revolutionary. It wasn't displayed as an avant-garde piece in an art gallery, but broadcast to the nation on Channel 4 and BBC Radio 3. A 70-minute film about HIV without a moving image was about as radical as it got in 1993. For such an experimental film to receive a mainstream broadcast, Cast on British television and radio was a radical decision, but essential. Blue's personal exploration of the effects of AIDS on gay men is insightful, poetic, upsetting, and informative. To wear such a film via mainstream British media would be an attempt to further educate the British public on significant LGBTQ plus issues. With music by a variety of artists such as Simon Fisher Turner, Brian Eno, and Coyle, Blue's more sensory exploration can be delirious and confrontational like Blue's monologues at their most frustrated. The film is initially challenging, but it encourages the audience to express empathy towards LGBTQ plus issues they may not be directly affected by. Stephen Holden, back in 1994, wrote for the New York Times stating that there are moments when the filmmaker's spirit seems on the verge of taking leave of his body and drifting into the ether. At other times, the writing is so incendiary that that he seems ready to jump out of his sickbed and burn down the hospital. As Stephen Holden suggests, Blue can be both stoic and furious. At its most furious, Derek Jarman is expressive of his frustrations towards organisations, charities, and people supposedly supportive of causes to help those suffering with AIDS, and their failure to acknowledge their lives lost, to aim for change while wanting to ignore the issue aiming to be changed. Derek Jarman is furious at a hypocrisy here. How can 1990s Britain want to support those suffering from HIV and AIDS and still have Section 28 in place until its eventual repeal in 2003? Elaborating on this, Max Ramsey wrote for Little White Lies, stating that Jarman left an important social and political legacy, being one of the first public figures to discuss his HIV diagnosis openly. He was an activist for a range of LGBT issues, notably his vocal opposition to Section 28. 28, an amendment that made the promotion of homosexuality illegal for local authorities and is now widely seen as an example of state-supported homophobia. Many LGBTQ plus people view to the establishing of Section 28 in the UK as a step backwards for queer rights, and Derek Jarman was no exception. How can an openly gay filmmaker not be furious when legislation was in place that opposed his right to exist? Blue Channel's much of this fury reflects via Derek Jarman's own experiences with AIDS treatments, communal support, and even his own homosexuality. Such a devastating virus as AIDS and HIV, as well as the governmental resentment towards LGBTQ plus people, leads Blue into an anti-homosexual rhetoric, where the narrator, during an uncomfortable song, expresses they are a not gay, a wishful suggestion to leave homosexuality and become heterosexual, where HIV and AIDS is not so common place, and where governmental legislation is always in favour, this is Blue at its most furious. At its more stoic, Blue is a tender-natured and upsetting experience. Derek Jarman reflects on the friends and ex-lovers he had lost to AIDS and HIV, making certain we remember their names. John, Daniel, Howard, 
Graham, Terry, Paul. These names are repeated extensively. Derek clearly always loved and respected them, and to see those closest to him turn into hollow versions of themselves due to this sickness. The narration explores the pain so poignantly. Consciousness to exhaustion. Dying later that night. Speech to incoherent groans. Laughter to pained tears. Men turning to stone. The graphic narration does not end here, as Derek Jarman makes us aware of the symptoms that his treatment can cause. Psychosis, lack of sleep, dizziness, low red and white blood cell count, diarrhea, depression. The pills are hard to swallow, large and often coughed back up half dissolved. When the narrator says that all his friends are dying or dead, the pain is intended to be shared across the audience. Not out of malice, but out of solidarity and understanding. Empathy and sympathy do we come to understand the true painful nature of losing loved ones to AIDS. As viewers, as listeners, we are led through the terrifying reality of suffering with AIDS and HIV. Blue should serve as a crying call for improvement, better facilities, medical support, educated awareness needs to be shared in regards to this pain. In 2018, within the UK, it is estimated that 1 in 14 people are unaware that they are living with HIV, which illustrates the importance of being tested frequently. However, while there is progress towards positive improvements in medical understanding of AIDS and HIV, it is always important that, whether straight, gay or bisexual, we remain informed and educated in regards to HIV and AIDS, as it still causes suffering in the present today. In conclusion, Derek Jarman's Blue is a thoroughly reflective piece of pure cinema that pushes the boundaries and expands the definition of what true cinema is. While no moving image fills the screen, and a shade of blue remains unaltered, the significance of the blue frame is a pure visual motive, as the narration delivers visual imagery that is bound to be distressing, yet informative for viewers. Despite its experimental approach, Blue explores a powerful, devastating and poignant autobiographical account of lives broken and loves lost. It is an essential piece of queer cinematic history.